Okay, our next, our next speaker is uh, Jan Holtzman. He is a graphics designer and a font designer. Good afternoon. Yeah. Thank you, everybody. Thank you very much for joining. Um, well, my name is Eyal Holtzman. I was born in Israel. I came to the Netherlands when I was 21. I studied graphic design uh, at uh, the Royal Academy in The Hague, uh, specializing in uh, type design and typography. And since 2007, uh, I have been uh, co-running design agency uh, with, with my life partner, Mirta, still. She will be watching, so uh, hi, dear. Uh, I was asked to uh, tell and show a bit about designs that we have uh, made um, that are uh, in, uh, in, in any way related to uh, language. And um, one particular interesting thing, this book, and I believe I heard the last part of Rick, uh, his uh, talk about uh, Turkish language and using Arabic script. I'm sure you'll be interested in this if you're, if you're not already familiar. Um, this book is called Duri Meknun, The Hidden Pearl. Uh, it is leather bound and uh, using my own typeface for the cover. Nice to do. Um, Dori McNoon was written by uh, Dervish Ahmed Bijan in uh, 15th century. It uh, is, uh, as I wrote for myself here, uh, a, a cosmography. It is a book about uh, life, the universe, and everything. And the original manuscript has been lost. The author of this book spent years collecting. And uh, I have some PDFs I will show you in a moment. It's impossible to really show like this. He has been collecting bits of pieces, bits and pieces of the original manuscript. Uh, he has been uh, composing them uh, and translating. This book is in German. And um, he has been, I will show you now the, the digital version. As you can see, parts of it are the translation. Uh, this is the original story. We thought to add this ruler at the side, which makes it possible to follow the story, the book, the original, if you want. And you can skip the comments and all the extra information that the author has provided. Because this is an, this is an academic book and he wanted to, uh, to give reference for everything that he did. He wanted to, 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 to uh, explain why, why he chose this particular part or this particular piece and how it would uh, go together. And what was very interesting about this book is that we wanted to keep the footnotes, the side notes, as close to the, uh, to the parts of the book that they were referring to. And yeah, it, it's a 600 page book and we spent about seven months, I think we composed every single page uh, almost by hand. Uh, and at some places where you can see, uh, for example, here, we gave the side notes more space uh, to compensate for their length. And this was very unique because at the end of the book, uh, from right to left. For this piece, we used uh, new software at the time. This book is from, from 2006. We used Winsoft Tasmim, which was the first uh, digital font that could replicate the character of, of, of uh, Arabic, or in this case, Ottoman uh, calligraphic script. And we could, because it was composed of small bits uh, that could be uh, added together to replicate the calligraphic style. And it was, it was a horrible software at the time. The computer would start smoking as soon as you would uh, try to, to apply anything, but it could uh, add in real time. Uh, you, could, you could change the amount of swashes and the length of, of uh, round parts and bows and stuff. 
and which gave it a very realistic, uh, as, as realistic as possible uh, feel. I will make uh, the talk quick. I have a lot to show you and not enough time. So I will jump back. This is a typeface I made some time ago for a Dutch retail company, which is called Dila and Camilla. And this typeface is using um, a technique that is called uh, open type. It's a very, very, very simple uh, uh, scripting uh, technique. You can basically say, if you type two characters, then you should replace them with another character. As you can see, those two A's are different from each other. If you can actually see the O's change as I type, for example, you see that the two E's are different or that the two B's are different as you type and which gives the font, the type, a very realistic uh, feel because when you write by hand, oh, each single character is slightly different. And all the single characters that you see are pre-designed. So uh, I had to, to design them and uh, assign them to glyphs and ask the software where every time you see uh, uh, an E followed by another E replaced both of them with one single glyph that looks like two E's that are different. And the funny thing is that you can take it, or for example, with www, you can see that all three are different, but you can take it even a step further. So even uh, the, the retail company is called uh, Dylan Camilla and they use ampersand in the middle of the name. And I scripted it that if I type two ampersands after each other, it will give us the name in a completely handwritten feel. And as you can see, if I try to select it, I can't select the loose letters it's still two ampersands behind that are programmed to look like that. It's fascinating to, uh, to, 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 to mimic the way, the way we write, the way fonts are, the way script is written by hand. And this is a nice example of a book we made, it's a children's book for, for teenagers, to young people, teenagers. It's about a boy that lives with his mother on an island, a weather station, and the boy is writing a diary. And inside the diary, he collects things that he finds. And it looks, the first part of the book really just looks like a, a, a notebook, like a school notebook. And at some point, he starts to make photographs of things that he see and that remind him of other things. And later on, it, it, it's, it's a troubled story and the boy is very upset. And at some point, all the stains and all the stuff that he has been collected come together and he's, he's, he's really not very happy. And the second part of the book, is the story that he has been writing or living in his head coming to life as uh, this, is, this is actually the main part of the book comes to life as, as a story that that, uh, uh, that you can read and to give the connection to keep the connection to the handwritten part we chose to have each chapter's name in the same handwritten font and it was, it was great fun to do. It was very nice to do. When I was graduating, um, I was fascinated by the existence or rather non-existence at the time of uh, suitable combinations of Latin and Hebrew script. So my graduation uh, project from the, from the postgraduate course at the Art Academy, an experimental uh, type project. Usually when two scripts try to join forces, uh, the designer uh, shares or try to share different elements 
of the font with each other, which does not always um, give the right result. It's, 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 it's basically never fair to one of the scripts. Either one is suffering or the other is suffering. And in this case, uh, my aim was not to copy or share elements, but share the color, if you will, or the way the fonts are behaving. And of course, they will share the same punctuation. They will share the same numbers. And if you will really, really zoom in, you see that they are completely different. But when you read the text, and when you look at the thing as a whole, it will give the feeling that they belong together and form one family. This was an experiment. And uh, I'm talking about 1996. And at that time, it was also rather new and original. There have been uh, other fonts that have been made later that, that, that did more justice to the combinations of uh, uh, but for me, it was it was more an experiment. I wanted to see how far I could take um, this this um, uh, marriage between the scripts. Um, I can't resist uh, sharing with you the another project. I spent years on on designing this type. This is this type called Crystal, and it has just been released a couple of months ago, and. Um, it has been a, a, a significant, uh, um, well, you know, like big achievement after spending so much, so much time and having it finally uh, finished as, and as you can see, it has supports for many, many, many languages. Um, earlier, just before it was finished, I used an early version of this uh, font together with an existing Hebrew font. They weren't designed to work together, but it's probably, it's, it's interesting to notice that maybe some in, in a way without knowing or realizing it, I did have elements in my crystal type that were uh, of, of, of the same, energy or the same spirit as the Hebrew script, uh, again, without, without uh, meaning to do that. And uh, they really worked harmoniously together. It was, it was fun to do and uh, thought the result was, was nice. Another nice project would like to, show, to share with you. This is called Tidalek. Tidalek means temporary. It's a book we made for a Belgian uh, publishing house. It's a project where Syrian refugees were writing poems and we tried to share as many graphical elements, for example, the name of the writer on the side, and then again on the other side. And share the size of the type, share the more or less the general color of the type to uh, create a, a bonding. It was a nice project to make because it was, uh, regardless of politics or, or, or any, any uh, uh, you know, about, about, about the real situation of those guys, it was just, you know, there was one one poem or short short piece here that that touched me because he 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 told about the old man that is sitting stranded in the in in Brussels Central Station and he can't go back to the shelter because he doesn't know how to use the machine to buy a train ticket, and it it kept the it was from heart to heart, if you will, and I believe they later tried to make a. a, a um, a theater presentation of, of the thing. It was it was very nice uh, uh, thing to do. Um, you cannot always uh, separate the, the the politics from language. You can see in this project, for example, 
Amber Revolution is the, is a book we designed about orange wines, and uh, it has been translated to many languages. This was the original. This one is the Korean version. You see, they they kept the exact same design. It's actually my own fist. And the Japanese version was also the same in Japanese. And then the Chinese version looked like this. Uh, what we thought was a cool design element, the, the, the propaganda poster idea of a fist holding, holding the glass and, and talking about a revolution, uh, seemed like a very bad idea in China and they, they didn't think that it was uh, uh, acceptable to, to use and they used their own illustration for the cover. Um, how much time do we have? Oh, we really don't have much time. I will finish with this book. This is one of my favorites. It seems and it looks like one book, whereas in fact it's eight. To begin with, there are two. It's a magic trick book. Uh, there are uh, both are, are are written from from both directions. So if you can, you can read it like this. Yeah. And there are two stories, and each story is composed of four translations of four languages. It was nice to when we when we, we decided to choose a color for each language, and it's it's, it's Dutch, German, uh, French, and Italian, and it sort of went like, like like went automatically like Dutch would be blue, German would be yellow or gold, French yeah that's of course red wine, and Italian that's of course green. And the colors are very dark. So when you read the book, you can basically concentrate on the language that you want to read. And the color is, 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 is not too dominant. You can still read the story without uh, being too much distracted. And halfway through the book, you will have to uh, switch and turn it upside down. And then there is this other book this one is called the the paus and the puss, the, the 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 pope and the cat, and it's interesting to tell the author sent it to the real pope, and believe it or not, he got a, a letter, he got a reply, and the pope told him uh, he thanked him for the lovely book. And he thought it was very nice. And what 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 I personally thought was 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 because I don't get letters from the Pope uh, of I don't know how they look. I have it, but I'm not allowed to share it. I had I was sworn not to show it. Uh, but the Pope was asking him to pray for him, which I thought was very um, very very interesting. I didn't know that the Pope asked people to pray for him when he sent them letters. Uh, this should conclude my. Uh, Short, quick presentation. And I guess there are there's still some time for questions, Uri. There's plenty of time for questions for chatting. Of course. Anyone have any questions, any comments? I have a question. You have a question. Oh great. Yeah. Okay. Uh, my name is Gila. Um I've just seen in the past few weeks a couple of presentations about a, a multimedia book mm -hmm. for children produced by in, in Bursum in Holland mm -hmm. and it's not yet reached the print stage but basically it's a digital book with all kinds of things extensions via uh, um, Q codes and things like that but um, the design I mean the, the, the whole co concept of design is at the moment it's in Dutch it's not in English or any other language but, and it, it's it's for, for for children in school school age children Mm -hmm. the, 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 I, I can see this rethinking of what a book does and how it's used in different languages and how it's used with other media and with design. Um, 
and it seems to be really fluid. We're going mm -hmm. somewhere new. And Can we have, you maybe give us direction? We have we have my daughter here has has a book with with the alphabet and uh, each each spread is dedicated to a letter and there are like literally hundreds of little drawings that all begin with that particular letter. And of course you can't find them all, uh, or maybe you can, but not everybody can. And uh, they made a, a small app that you can download. And if you direct the phone to the book and you look at the page, uh, you see a picture of the page and all the names, all the, they're, they're like, like, like or tags with the names of, this, of the objects on the page appear which makes it a, a fantastic combination of, of, of interactive and, uh, and classic uh, book. I think we will see much more of these things uh, in the near future. Um, personally, we are more of a traditional, we have been designing uh, websites uh, and, 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 and digital stuff, but we're more of, an, of a traditional print studio and and with emphasis on typography and and and, uh, and type design any comments questions um general chatting yeah i have a question uh, have you have you done many um uh, hebrew scripts yeah i should probably have but uh i can tell you that uh, at this moment i am uh, in contact with uh Biblioteca Rosentaliana is part of the University of Amsterdam and they have the uh, ancient collections of, of uh, old, old Hebrew uh, scripts. And I can tell you off the record that we are uh, considering a revival, a digital revival of uh, Font Amsterdam, which is the, the, the Jewish, the, the, the script, the, the fonts that are, are being used in more or less all the, Holy scripts, all the, and they have the originals more or less. The originals again are lost, and the real originals are, are very difficult to to define. So we, it's, it's a lot of research in uh, composing what is and what should have been the type uh, as it was intended by the original designer, and then uh, releasing a new digital version of it. And I'm, 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 extremely honored to be part of this project. It's like the holy grail of uh, type design. So, uh, otherwise I haven't touched uh, Hebrew uh, as, as uh, not as much as I should have, but there are only 24 hours a day. <laughs> I specialize in, in Latin type design. That's, that's more my, uh, my uh, specialty. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Okay. Well, uh, first of all, I really love your designs and um, so I waited to do and sing some of them firsthand. You, here is back. Thank you. Yes, and I love the, 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 the story about the letter from the Pope, which I was a bit envious about, because last year I actually tried to invite him for our last... You did, you told me. <laughs> yes. But I haven't told anyone here, because when I was preparing the last year's conference, they are also, also online, I was reading about the, about the Pope, that he speaks eight languages, and I thought, well, that would be a great speaker for a conference. It brings an audience. It's got a following. And I actually emailed him, and I emailed twice, and then I got this very serious letter told me that... Uh, the Holy Father does not give interviews, it does not do conferences. Then a few weeks later, I hear you, you see you come up with the story of bragging with who gets better celebrities, and you came up with the story about the letter from the Pope, which is <laughs> okay. We had the great celebrities last year in the, in the conference on this year also, but it was a, a very it, it happened very very near at the same time. So I was a bit envious of that interview. <laughs> you can keep trying, you never know. He, he may yeah, well. Well, it's a policy. They said they got thousands of reports today, and then he just wrote you because it's a very nice story of a cat. We just proved that cats get anyone, get everyone. Cats are just cute. Everyone likes cats. Yeah. Yeah. And translators, you know, I think half the people here probably have cats. Okay. Thank you for a great talk. Thank, Thank you, you so very much for listening. Thank you. And talk. Bye. Doug. Thank you very, very much. You're very welcome. Thank you for listening. Bye bye. <laughs>